Hello everyone, Pally Tim here. Welcome back to the A through Z playthrough. In today's video, we have landed on Falstad. I'm just gonna warn you right now, I'm super duper tilted today. <laughs> oh, oh, I'll talk about it a little bit. And it's all just stuff that doesn't matter, which makes me even more tilted. Okay, I'm gonna open my eyes now. Unfortunately, Falstad uh, doesn't have accurate numbers on Heroes Profile right now because a balance patch literally just came out. Luckily for me, I looked this morning at his win rate, and I want to say it was 49%. He was not changed in the balance patch at all, but they cycle their win rates for every single patch that happens. Uh, his popularity right now is 22%. His win rate right now since the patch is 29%. But again, that's not accurate. It was 49 this morning morning with thousands of matches played as results so unfortunately i can't tell you his actual current popularity but falstad was added into the game as one of the original launch characters fun fact his heroic abilities were a little different back then the hinterland blast was named shock and awe and if you haven't noticed i still call it that quite a lot i think it's a much better name than hinterland blast it takes so long to say shock and awe was much better. Also, the Mighty Gust was not his original heroic ability in that slot. He actually had something called Aerial Blitzkrieg back in the day, where Falstad would like channel a storm around him and then it would be a big AoE stun. Think like a Divine Hurricane from Uther, probably a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger with a uh, one to two second wind up time, I think. It was quite a long channel. They changed that a long, long time ago. Falstad was the character that I showed off in my very, very first video on the Haunted Mines way back in the day. I remember it like it was yesterday. It's so funny because in general, my memory is really, really, really bad. But I remember that match like I just played it almost, or at least p parts of that match. It was on the Haunted Mines, and whenever I fired off Shock and Awe, I would say, I'm a fire in my lasers, way back in my, my young man voice that I no longer have. <laughs> for a long time, I had this build for Falstad that used generic talents, and I dubbed it the Zero Stress Falstad build. It used Vampiric Assault, which was Life Leech, on auto attacks. It used first aid, which was a just activatable button you could press to heal. It used, uh, not stone skin, was it stone skin? To give yourself an on-demand shield as well. And I would run that with Hinterland Blast. So if anyone came up to me, I would just pop all of my defensives and try to trade into them, usually win. And if things didn't go my way, just push them away with Hinterland's Blast. If you ever wanna look up those videos, that was a pretty, pretty, pretty fun time to play Falstad. For a long time, he had two main builds, one focused on being more of a mage, centered around your Q, going out and exploding for damage, and the other build being focused on just auto-attacking, and really nothing else really mattered. A lot has changed on Falstad. I should look up when his rework is, where when his rework was. I didn't look that up. I also should say, you know, he did technically have a W build too, but not a lot of people really ran it until March 2nd this year, 2021, Falstad got some massive, massive changes. This was not his first rework. I think this is probably his second or or maybe even third. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with two. I'm going to go with second rework. And lightning build was so crazy strong. All of a sudden, at level one for Falstad, you have a meaningful choice that you need to make that really defines the rest of your match. Do you want to focus on stacking your Q for a more burst magey style build? Do you want to focus on stacking your W with a really aggressive play style that has you diving after enemies? But if it works out, you are going to be a force to be reckoned with in the late game. This is more single target damage, but you actually, if you get kills, it resets the cooldown of your lightning rod so you can cast it on new enemies and burst them down too. This was super duper overtuned for a long time. 
when this patch rolled out. It seems like that's kind of been the common trend with Blizzard development recently. Zagara was a great example of this, and Falstad followed a similar path. When this rework came out, Zagara's win rate was 68% because she was just so overtuned. And they disabled her three and a half weeks later to release a patch the next day to fix her. So why even disable her at all at that point? Falstad had a similar trajectory. I don't think he quite hit 68. I want to say he was in like 62, 63% range. But this build was so strong. It just devoured anything that walked in front of it. Also, there was a bug with this on day one uh, where you could just shock anything. So if you went and did boss, <laughs> just go shock the boss and walk around, you would basically stack up your quest so damn quickly. And uh, that got fixed pretty fast. But there is one more build for Falstad as well. This one focused on auto-attacking and scaling your damage up, as well as dealing percentage damage to enemies as you kind of hit the middle game. All of these choices are completely valid, although the Q and the auto-attack build are probably the easiest to perform right now. The W build is great if you have a team working with you and that will support you as you're diving in early and getting those early game stacks in quick match. I don't really know if I would recommend it right now. Uh, but Falstad's in a pretty good spot. I like this character a lot. He is my highest level damage dealer and my second highest level character on my account, just behind Stitches. Falstead level 49 and a half. I should just finish off and get him to level level 50 so I can get the new taunt. So that's a little bit of the history about the character. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I'm going to rant for a second and a thing I've already recorded, and then we're going to jump into today's match. I'm warning you already. I'm a little tilted. I'm not trying to be. I promise it happens to the best of us. Take care. Appreciate you guys being here. I hope you enjoy the match. I'm going to go take a nap. Nap sounds good. Go take a nap. You ever just have a day where everything isn't quite going the way you want? My Orcs Must Die video for today had five minutes of black space in the middle of it, of just nothingness. So I have to re-render that and re-upload it. Uploading is a bit of a pain because we're still waiting on our new modem arrive and it shipped two weeks ago and it was supposed to take three days to get here. Uh, when it does get here, uh, our upload speed is going to more than triple. But as of right now, to upload a 20 minute video, it takes two fucking hours. How have I done my job for this long? How have I done that? I ordered Chipotle because they got this new brisket thing. And Chipotle, I even got it delivered. It ended up being like 35 bucks when I got what Holly wanted to, which is fine. I wanted to try the biscuit, the brisket. Yes, I know it's $11.30 per serving. Jesus Christ. Then they sent me a single taco instead of my burrito. And I tried to contact customer support to get that sorted. And uh, they said they can't refund me, even though I didn't get my order. Then I just tried to record this game, and it was against a mind build Abathur, which is already annoying. And then someone on our team just left. Doozy. Doozy of a day. In the grand scheme of things, this is all completely inconsequential. None of this fucking matters. But hitting me all at once when I didn't get any sleep. Man, that's a challenge. Let me tell you, that's a challenge. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves on Volskaya Foundry. The friendly team, Falstad, Thrall, Hanzo, Deathwing, and Zagara. The enemy, Leora, Kilthas, Vala, The Butcher, and Zara tool. As is often the case in games like this, I imagine we just need to do okay and make sure the butcher doesn't get too much meat. And if my games from today are any indicator, this bu this butcher is going to finish his quest in about one minute and 45 seconds. Just the worst fucking matches ever today. Maybe that's a little bit of hyperbole because we all know about the level 30 Artanis game. We all know about that. We all know about that. So, 
let's make sure that we are soaking XP as much as possible. Let's make sure that we are killing minions as much as possible because our level one talent is going to give us 0.2 attack power as well as 0.5 attack, oh, 0.2 attack power for every minion that we kill and 0.5 for every hero that dies nearby us. So hopefully we participate in a lot of those kills. The butcher moving up pretty far here. We are going to hit him with the boomerang, which is our Q of, ooh, shit. My bad, my bad. I was not paying attention, which is our Q ability. This sends a straight line projectile out that then returns to us moments later. We are going to be augmenting this to explode in a little bit, just so we can clear minion waves a little bit faster and really focus on boosting up our level one talent. Our W ability is the uh, Lightning Rod. We're really not gonna have too much of a focus on this ability today. Uh, the build dedicated to this, you have to play like hyper aggressive in the early game to really make it pay off. And that's not something I'm looking to do today. I'm really truthfully just looking to have chill games where things go well and it's like, hey, we won. I wonder what that would be like. Our E ability is the barrel roll. This allows us to maneuver over a short distance, gaining a shield and also a little bit of movement speed in the process. And barrel roll is one of those abilities that I wish, I really wish gave you unstoppable. I mean, I totally understand why it doesn't because of, a, you know, balance issues. But man, it feels really bad to be interrupted out of your one and only movement ability. When you see characters like Genji that can just dash around the, you know, screen, the entire time. Uh, the Butcher and Zeratul roaming together as a pack of murderers, but they decided to actually charge in on Deathwing there instead of me, which I am very thankful for. Don't get me wrong. At level four, we're going to pick up hammer gains, and then we're immediately going to start working. Ooh. Uh... We're immediately going to start working on this mercenary camp here. Uh, because I haven't scaled my damage up too much, we're definitely not going to come out ahead as far as sustaining against this thing. We're going to get beat up pretty hard, but at least we heal with every auto attack, so it wasn't as bad as it could have been. Butcher's in the top lane, and we assume Zeratul's with him because they've been a, um, a flock of seagulls together. So I'm going to continue pushing in here. This actually looks like a free tower to me. Oh, there he is. <laughs> got to wake up pretty early to get one on the fast Eddie. I got out of there pretty fast. The enemy's Leoric is being taken down. So far, we've increased our auto attack damage by seven. Yep, just, just seven. <laughs> it does scale up, but it's not like you're going to be rocketing to top damage on your team or anything. The team fight is underway. I unfortunately flew to the bottom of the map because I wanted to get some of these kills. The butcher is directly in front of me. We hit him with the hammering and take him down before he can do too much damage to Thrall. Now, I do have the turret, so if I can get in here and place it down, we're going to have a pretty good handle on this situation. Volum he got hit with the brunt of our boomerang, but it wasn't quite enough to take her down. We are going to pick up boomerang now, just in case, you know, I wasn't confusing enough with what I was actually saying in my tired mumbles. Uh, boomerang allows us to reactivate our Q ability and cause it to explode for some additional area damage. This is just going to give me better clear speed in lanes, which hopefully means I'm going to be able to get some of those passive points built up for our attack damage from just clearing lanes like I should be. We do get the assist on taking down Zeratul, which means that we did get a little bit of an attack bonus from that. The Butcher charging in on Zagara. Yes! This is what I want! This is what I want, Butcher! Thank you! Oh my god! <laughs> oh, I just needed a break today, Butcher. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> In fact, Leoric's super low on health too is going to give us even more stacks. And then I'm immediately going to travel up to the top lane to continue clearing. Focusing on stacking in the early game is a very common theme for Falstad. All of his level one talents actually incorporate stacking in some way. So when you go into a match, you just need to have a plan for what you're going to do. And my plan is to constantly be farming, constantly be getting XP, and hopefully propelling my team to a swift victory. 
Butcher's down in the bottom lane, traveling with Zeratul. They are going to take down Zagara. That's pretty difficult to deal with. Um, but luckily for us, it means we got a little bit of time. Trying to dodge some abilities here. We do just fine. I'm actually going to try to just fly this way. Unfortunately, it's not going to... Oh, yeah. Didn't quite clear it. Didn't quite clear it. Unfortunately, the three-man rotation to the top lane does catch me and also uses my mount cooldown. We don't have a traditional mount on Falstad. Instead, we have a pretty generous range global flight ability. Well, not quite global, but a long-range flight ability. This has been... Uh, this has come victim to the same problem that Dahaka and Abathur have, where if you double-tap this skill because, you know, you're trying to leave in an emergency... It's going to put it on a nine second cooldown. Easily one of the worst changes that's made it into the game. There is absolutely no reason for that to be there at all. Yet it still remained in the game for multiple years. Blizzard, if you have any Heroes developers listening, please. I just want to know why. What was the reasoning? You don't have to change the game because of me. I just don't understand. I want to understand. Please help me. Uh, Butcher is in the middle lane. We did manage to take down that middle fort there, which is pretty good. Looks like we are converging on a Leoric gank at the moment, and that's going to be some easy damage for me. We've increased our auto attack up to 15 damage. We've added 15 damage onto the top of it. Uh, we see Zeratul down in the bottom lane. Does that mean the Butcher is there with him? It might, but Vala... <laughs> was taken down as she overstayed her welcome. Leoric now emerging again. I'm going to give myself some increased attack speed here, hit him with the boomerang, and then fall back pretty quickly, pushing Zeratul back into my friendly team just so I can get away. How did we push him back? Well, that was our level 10 heroic ability, the Mighty Gust, one of the most powerful abilities in the game when used correctly. And there's a lot of fun little variations you could do with it. You can peel for yourself just like we did there, pushing a hostile target back into the enemy team or the friendly team we can save it for when the butcher engages and try to peel for one of our allies if that opportunity arises or we could do some fun shit like fly behind the enemy team push them into our walls here so they take damage from the the buildings attacking them and hopefully our team wombo combos them really your creativity is the only limit with what you can get away with with mighty gust very 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 fun ability at level 13, we are going to go for sustained wins. This is going to give me some percentage damage against our adversaries. Uh, if Tailwind is active, that's going to be 2% damage. If Tailwind is not active, it's 1.5% damage based on the target's health. Uh, the enemy team did take over a mercenary camp in the top lane, and I would like to kill this before it does too much stuff. So I'm actually going to activate my fort. Huh. That was a friendly one, huh? <laughs> Make a wish. <laughs> All right, this is pushing into towers. In fact, I might just be able to take this tower down. I'm going to put my turret down. I believe in that. That's a free building. The enemy team is really slow on responding to this, and I'm going to get a free channel here for at least a moment. The butcher is returning to lane, and I don't want him to see me. So we're going to sit right on this corner. And once we lose sight of him, we're going to retreat back to our buildings. This is not worth stacking the Butcher up over, and he's at 139 meat right now. Uh, the enemy team's Kale Thos. Ooh, I thought he was moving up to the point by himself. It looks like that is not the case. However, Deathwing landing right on top of him, and we're going to connect with the Lightning Rod, dealing periodic damage to him as well. Vala kind of stuck in the corner here. We have Leoric rotating down. I'm going to give myself Tailwind and deal percentage damage to Leoric, melting him as fast as possible. Looks like Deathwing was fighting back Zeratul, who did manage to get away by the skin of his teeth. We're going to push Zeratul into the Maw. That's definitely what I was trying to do, and I will hear nothing else. <laughs> Actually, I was just trying to create a little bit of space for our team, but hey, that worked out. This building that we were trying to take down earlier does go down, and that means that Deathwing is able to use his Cataclysm again if he decides to do so. I'm going to stand on this point while the friendly team is pushing it. It looks like this is actually going pretty well for them. Um, yep. Yep, nothing to see here. 
Zeratul's dead, so we don't have to worry about him sneaking up on me. I mean, we might get a stray butcher out of somewhere, and there's really no answer for that. We'll just accept our death, but it looks like he's back in the enemy team's base as well. The silence going out on Thrall is going to connect. Can they kill him? Oh, beautiful fire damage by Deathwing. I'm going to bring this to him so he can jump in and peel for him a little bit. J jump in. Jump. Uh, oh, I was trying. I was trying, bro. I was trying to help you. Get in, dragon. Oh, never mind. He flew away. Well, what do I do with this now? Uh, the next objective's in the bottom lane. Maybe I'll just walk down there and we can get a little bit of a lead on that. The enemy team's really respecting me. <laughs> they just let me walk around. At level 16, I'm going to take Afterburner just to give myself a little bit more movement speed. Uh... <laughs> Using it to defend. I, I, I'm just lonely. More than anything. Kael'thas being not stunned into the wall because I missed everything. Deathwing is jumping in. So we do have a gunner now. I'm just going to continue to back up here. Another arrow going by our face. Make a wish. Everyone saw the shooting star. Uh, we do have a stun for Vala, but unfortunately I miss again. Luckily for us, the Sunder does not. My Q ability, we're a little bit out of range. Not going to be able to chase that one down. Uh, the Butcher down here in the bottom lane might be waiting for us as we exit that. I was hoping he didn't have a silence ready for us. Uh, so what I was trying to do there was head down to the bottom lane because the bottom lane is where the next objective is going to be. So if we could get this building down, that's a big win for our team. That means we can push even farther with the next objective. Just so my thought process was at least a little bit clear. We're going to give ourselves that tailwind attack speed increase and take down Leoric, increasing our total attack damage gained this game to 25 on top of our normal basic attack. We're hitting for 229 right now. That's okay. I mean, I've seen better. I've, I've seen worse too, I guess. But luckily we're at the point where we can actually sustain versus this mercenary camp a little bit. If you compare that to what happened early on in the game, that's just night and day. Um, the enemy team mostly located in the middle lane right now. I'm going to try to get over here and get another camp going for us. Oh, I wanted to group these guys up a little bit, uh, almost like I was playing D.Va, but that's not gonna happen. Lightning rod on the one in the back as I auto attack the one in the front, then we'll swap over to him, kind of spreading out our damage and making this pretty efficient. I mean, we didn't take, real, we healed almost a full health off of this camp. That's not bad at all. Mighty Gust is ready and the enemy team seems like they're trifling. Unfortunately, Hanzo not able to get away. Leoric, however, also not able to get away, but he does drop that turret just before he dies. So I'm not going to have access to that, but what I do have access to is more attack damage. Thank you, my good friend. The Butcher not fully committing to this charge here. Great damage with our boomerang there as we throw it into the enemy team, hitting three members. We do need to be careful with the Butcher above us, but it actually looks like he's retreated to top lane. So we're going to push this out rotate bottom we can do a pretty good push there and with three members of the enemy team dead they're not really going to be able to respond to it either the boomerang is sent 401 damage on that almost enough to kill the archers in a single throw the butcher's top lane kelthos has a fucking pyroblast so i really can't afford to push up on myself and there he is right there i definitely would have been the target for that pyroblast uh, at level 20, we can go for anything at this point to complement this build. All of these make sense with the build that we are running. Uh, Nexus Frenzy simply means that we're going to be auto attacking more often, which is a big focus of our build. Epic Mount means we have more global map presence, which means we're going to be stacking up our auto attack multiplier even higher. Or I guess it's not a multiplier, but you get what I mean. And Wind Tunnel could potentially be a huge save for peeling for our allies if the Butcher starts to pop off. And because of that, I think that's the choice I'm going to go for. We want to try to mitigate their advantages as much as possible. And I mean, I still have a global. I could still get around. I could still auto attack. You know what I mean? But at least we have an answer for the Butcher if he engages on literally anyone else but my self uh they have rotated away more or less 
Uh, Zeratul trying to split push top. The enemy team did just grab level 20. They were likely waiting for their 20s to engage. Uh, can I get a peek? They're not getting the turret. One thing we can do with the upgraded Mighty Gust is push enemies into terrain, into walls, and it'll actually keep them stunned for quite some time. As a, what the fuck was that damage? Chillin', chillin', chillin'. Flame strike, dead. All right. All right. Sounds good. Didn't drop my turret in time because I wasn't expecting to die, although I did have a little bit of wiggle room with that where I probably should have. I'm not sure what happened to our turret. Maybe Thrall picked it up. Like I said, not sure. Unfortunately, we are splitting against the Butcher, and he does pick up another kill on Zagara. His meat quest is done, and he's only getting more powerful from this point on. Thrall is trying to run away. Unfortunately, running into Zeratul here. Great Root is going to lock him in place, though. Butcher pushing down the lane, making his way over so he should be careful we're going to be back up in 20 seconds and i'm probably just going to move up to the top lane and make sure that this mercenary camp doesn't get too much value 30 seconds is probably enough time to contest this again especially if they keep walking off of it like that i don't know maybe it's not maybe 30 seconds isn't enough time i'm looking at zagara's death timer run wondering if we can re-engage one thing that is working in our favor is leoric's actually split pushing right now so the entirety of the enemy team is not down there uh i'll be able to get down there pretty quick as soon as this is done auto attack this lightning rod that uh i'm here if they want to try if they don't want to try i understand too looks like deathwing is going in zeratul in melee range not able to finish him off Ooh, great arrow chasing him down the lane is going to do a pretty good job, though. Unfortunately, I have to fall back right away. We're going to try to push the Butcher back, but we were just moments too late on that mighty gust. Uh, Vala moving into us right now. Here's our Tailwind bonus trying to out-trade her, and we do not get it. And that's going to be a full team wipe down in the bottom lane as the enemy team picks up the Volskaya robot. They can do a lot with this, especially with a butcher that's stacked up past his quest. They can hit quite hard. It's actually very good that the butcher is the one that's in the gunner seat, meaning they don't have his huge damage to chip away at these towers even faster. Lior definitely should have been the choice to get in there. The other good news, two members of the enemy team are technically dead. Uh, also, my heroic and flight abilities are going to be ready to go the moment I spawn. So we potentially could go for a go behind these guys and try to set them up in some kind of wombo combo kind of play. Hanzo's going to be the first one up, followed by Deathwing, but it looks like this building has seen its final sunrise as it's taken down. Hanzo firing his ult off. It doesn't stun anybody because they're in a robot. But hey, it saved him about seven steps, so that's something. <laughs> I'm not going to fly in. Instead, we're just going to walk uh, Boomerang out, Tailwind active, and our Lightning Rod on target as well. Deathwing coming down to the party. Let's see if we can finish off Leoric. Yes, we do. And Mighty Gust into the wall here should stun both of these guys. The Butcher not able to run away, and we're going to take him down. That is the beauty of that level 20 ability. If they position next to a wall, they're basically stunned for two seconds. Super duper strong. Uh, the friendly team is starting to rally. I'm going to grab this. Of course, I can join them in a moment's notice with my flight ability. Group up and push. We, we shouldn't be split pushing now. Uh, fucking Zagara died. That's kind of bad. Uh, we can meet our team middle, though. We still do have numbers advantage, and it'll be a while before the enemy team starts to respawn. Zeratul engaging here. Tailwind is active. Is it enough? Yes, it is to take him down, staggering their deaths quite a lot. I'm also feeling pretty good about Leoric coming back because I don't think I'm going to be his main target. I think Deathwing's going to be his main target. So let's get some damage out on him while we can. Good stun means he's not going to be able to get into... Ooh, shit, get out of the way. Get out of the way. A beautiful arrow from Hanzo across the map is going to connect and stun him in his place. Now we do need to be concerned. The Butcher has respawned, so I'm gonna play a little bit further back here. 
Please don't spread that onto me. Mighty Gust appeal for our team, and let's just completely disengage from this. There's zero reason to die here. There's zero reason to go back in. They're still dying. Okay. Okie okay, dokie. Okay, dokie. Uh, I don't have Mighty Gust for quite some time, so I'm just going to hang out behind our building here. Try not to get in those flame strikes because they deal a buttload of damage. But flame strikes on cooldown. Let's see if we can kill a butcher. Yes, we can. The team rallies really, really well there. We have a 44 auto attack damage bonus right now. That's actually starting to get pretty huge. Our auto attack hitting for 301 every time we auto attack. And we have 1.43 auto attacks per second. So that's actually a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. Not to mention I can increase our attack speed even more when I activate Tailwind. With the butcher dead, I'm gonna try to move up here and grab this. This might be a decision that I regret. However, we do have the mighty gust if we need it. I'm backing up. I'm backing up. I don't wanna I don't wanna feed for this. He says he gets hit with so many, so many hungering arrows. I'm actually just gonna go back and heal here. And we may have helped them secure the heal. That's exactly what we did. But again, not the end of the world. Deathwing is alive, just not on the map currently. He's getting his armor plates re uh re refinished B rebuffed Exit. Deta detail that's the word i was looking for when you take your car to get all cleaned up and nice uh we do have a turret spawning here so i'm going to try to take this over right away lightning rod on the turret damage there perfect beautiful deathwing has already engaged uh, Kel'Thuzad in a pretty bad spot here, stuck on the tram, so we're gonna take him down. Move in with the turret down, finishing off Leoric. Mighty Gust here to try to stun the Butcher. Unfortunately, it wasn't super successful. Um, if I could fucking move my character, I would love to chase him down. Oh, he's actually re-engaging on Thrall. I'm just gonna stand here. I don't have to do anything complicated. Oh my god. <laughs> Please. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Zagar is standing on the point, channeling that for our team. The only person on the enemy team alive is Vala, and there she is. Moving in with all of her damage, she is going to secure that kill and get away with it because we weren't on the point. I was thinking about flying top to help clear that wave, but that didn't quite work out for me. Leoric's going to be coming back soon, and he does have March of the Black King, which means he's going to be able to restore that health pretty quickly uh here he goes forming tailwind vol is coming to me we're leaving i'm just trying to buy time we're drawing him away from the objective the deathwing is standing on which means our team might get a little bit faster we're going to mighty gust these guys off immediately maybe actually kill off the orc as well and with Vala re-engaging, we need to make sure we don't get too close to that damage, but we do secure the objective, and I immediately jump into the gunner's seat, focusing my damage on Kael Thoss as he is running away. I can't get too much closer to him. That's okay. The friendly team taking us to the middle lane now. We're going to focus our Q damage on the building as we're walking up and then fire off our W. W is the highest DPS, but it does have a downtime. So make sure you're just kind of weaving everything in between being able to spam out your W. Unfortunately, the Butcher does engage pretty hard on our friendly team. We are doing some pretty good damage though. If that explodes, he's probably dead, but we shouldn't chase too far here. Shouldn't chase too far. Kael'thas getting the crap beat out of him as he chases us down as well. Leoric re-emerging is going to be able to siphon off a lot of health from us if we let him. Uh, if the Butcher's going to chase us, I'm just going to start to put stuff down in a straight line. Looks like Zagar is trying to go for a split push up top. Uh, I'm going to jump out of this early and leave because I don't want the Butcher to silence me right when this thing gets destroyed. I have a feeling... He was kind of just holding a cooldown for that, and we did not want that to happen. Leoric rotating up to the top lane is going to stop the aggression that Zagara had started. And Hanzo respawning in 15 seconds. We will soon have our entire party back. Uh, if they rotate middle, this might be a good fly behind. Butcher's in the top lane. How far forward is he? Ugh, Butcher's missing now, so I don't, I don't feel safe going for it. Volive moving in for the side with a bunch of bullshit damage. Uh, Zeratul moving up as well. The Maw is going to miss all targets. Leoric 
shit ton of damage being taken there, bringing our total up to 51 increased damage. Uh, I'm gonna use this little bit of downtime to start working on this camp. And if we play our cards right, I think we'll actually heal up to pretty much full health at the end of this. However, the team is still chasing. We do lose our Zagara. Even though Leoric was taken down, there's still a threat. Uh, this region globe feels pretty good, but this team fight down here doesn't look great as the enemy team engages on our thrall. We do lose him. Uh, Boomerang on Butcher. He doesn't quite have charge yet, but he might have it soon. Um, oh, Jesus. Deathwing is taken down. Mighty Gust was used. And now we are in a full retreat, hoping we do not lose our buildings. Uh, however... Uh, I don't think you need to be a rocket surgeon to see that we're in a pretty bad spot here. Uh, I can auto attack until the butcher moves up and then I'm just kind of dead. And here he comes. Treating back into the base. If I had saved Mighty Gust earlier, this may have been okay. Hanzo suiciding in means this is probably going to be the end of our game. But hopefully you saw some of the potential that Falstad has to bring to the game. I'm gonna be honest. I've had terrible fucking matches today. This is the first one that was even somewhat competitive. So this is the one that we're fucking going with. And hey, we got MVP on the losing side. Just go ahead, go ahead. I'll open up the wound, put some salt into it. I'm ready. How effective do you feel the reporting system in Heroes of the Storm is? Well, it's awful. I got reported for impersonating myself and lost my username. Go fuck yourself. Stop asking me that question. Talents we went for in today's video. Frequent Flyer, Hammer Gains, Boomerang, Mighty Gust, Sustained Winds, Afterburner, and Wind Tunnel. Unfortunately, everything didn't come up the way we wanted, but we still dealt 91,000 siege, 76,000 hero damage, soaked a total of 24,000 XP, actually stacked up our auto attack bonus to be quite formidable, but unfortunately, the staggering of deaths is just a little bit too hard to overcome. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Next up, we'll be back with Phoenix, a character I don't know how to play. I'm sure that'll be fun.